Hello, today we're looking at the GoTech Foppy Drive Emulator. Now you may wonder why you want to use one of these. Well, if you work with old computers such as the BBC Micro, then you're probably familiar with the old type of disk drives. So this is a Quest 5 and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. As you can see, the drive is huge. Now you would use these types of floppy disks, five and a quarter inch, Let's come out a bit. There you go. And this could only store between 100 and 200 kilobytes, depending on form formatting. And obviously very unreliable, can easily be damaged and slow. If we compare it to the more familiar three and a half inch floppy disk, which can store around a megabyte, you can see how big it is. But these were actually called mini floppies at the time, because obviously you had the eight inch floppy disks as well. So fast forward to 2020, if you're still working with old types of computer like I do, then you can get hold of these GoTek floppy drive emulators. This set me back about £25, that's around 32 US dollars, and there's lots of different versions with different firmware. This is running the Flash Floppy firmware, which is freely available online, you can inspect it, I think you can make your own version, so it's total transparency in what it's doing. So, looking at it in more detail, we'll zoom in a bit. On the front we have a three digit LED display. As mentioned, other GoTex have different displays. Um, you know, can display more information. This just shows which disk image is selected. We have the USB port for your flash drive. We have previous and next buttons to select the previous and next disk images. And we have an LED for disk access. On the back, we have a standard PC floppy power connector, standard, or we'll lay about standard PC disk drive interface. We have a programming uh, header, because you can change the firmware or update it. And we have some header options. I didn't need to change anything, but for your computer, you may have to, as you view the information online. So, to go into a bit more detail about the power connector, I've just wired up this simple adapter which goes into the Molex power connector that came with that disk drive you saw. And on the other end is the BBC Micro Auxiliary power connector. And for the floppy drive disk interface, this is what goes into BBC Micro, and this is just a standard PC floppy drive cable. As most people will be aware who works with these types of cables, they're often designed to accommodate two floppy disk drives. So I've actually cut off the end that will go to the B drive, just so I don't plug in the wrong end. Uh, if you do have any troubles getting this go tip working with your computer, it's always worth trying a different floppy disk connector or buy a kit that comes with uh, the correct cable that would definitely work uh, with your system. Now, I tried a number of different flash drives, let's just zoom out a bit. So I have a uh, two gigabytes integral, and I have a 256 megabytes, uh, no name, uh, is it no, no, it's not no name, is it? it's Technica, yeah. And I have a Sony 64 gigabytes flash drive. Now, I could load uh, disk images, files of any of these drives, but I couldn't save or delete or format. I tried changing two different cables, I came back to the original cable and now suddenly it was saving to the flash drives. There is a known issue where it thinks the flash drive is right protected, so that could be your issue, but for me it ended up being the cable or some other weird thing. But now I can save and load from all of these uh, flash drives. Interestingly, this one, the cheaper one, uh, seems to be faster than this one. So there is a bit difference in speed in terms of what flash drive you use, but generally it'd be similar speed or faster than using an actual uh, floppy disk drive and disk, but obviously you've got the reliable storage and you can easily transfer files from your PC to this uh, flash drive, and just much more reliable and you can have hundreds of disk images. So next we will look at actually using the GoTech with the BBC Micro. Okay, so we're going to turn the BBC Micro on. Okay, so it's booted. And you see that I have DFS 2.2J disk software installed with a 1770 controller. So if you have different disk software and controller, then your commands may be different for working with floppy disks. Okay, so 
if you look on the GoTech display, hopefully you can make that out okay, it says 000, which means the first floppy disk image is selected. If we type star cat, it will list the files on that floppy disk, or the virtual floppy disk anyway. And you can see the files listed, and if we press next, and do cat, it will then list the files on that second floppy disk image, and of course the display shows 001. But we're going to go back to the previous floppy disk image. Okay, and that will settle down on 000. And if we do cat once more, you'll see that we are indeed back to the first floppy disk image. Now if you notice the first file boot, that means we can auto boot it. And one way to do that is to hold shift and press break. This brings back memories of school, I have to say, because we had these computers at school and it's do the shift break to load software and that. Oh, how computers are so easy nowadays. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna have a quick play of this. I'm not very good at it, but just to show it load the software, fine. Uh, whoops, go off to a rubbish start. I don't actually know what to do, but there you go. Uh, I don't know, but there you are, it works. Um, then if I press break to exit from that. So back into basic, we're gonna write a simple program and save it to disk. So try and follow along. So we start a loop, and if you can work out what the output of this basic program will be. Got to type this very carefully. And then we do each iteration of the loop. And if we run this, this is the output we get. Okay, so we're gonna save this to the floppy disk or the virtual floppy disk. So to do that, we just ta type save and the file name without spaces. You can't have file names, unfortunately. Oh, sorry, you can't have spaces in your file name. Um, and just to note that you don't need the star, it's not star save, because save and load are commands that work with the cassette as well as the floppy. So they are built into basic. And we're gonna save that. And to prove it's actually been saved, the first can do a cat. And you can see, yep, it is real. Okay, let's load that. But before we do that, let's type in new to delete the program from memory. And if we list, it should be gone, yep. And so to load from this, we do load with the file name in quotes. And if we list that, it is indeed there. And we can run it as before. Let's now delete it. So you need to do star delete, file name in quotes. And if we cat that again, you'll see that the file has indeed been deleted. So very straightforward. The last thing we can do is create a blank floppy disk image. Unfortunately my version, the GoTech, which has a flash floppy firmware installed, doesn't allow you to format the flash drive. So all you need to do is copy a, any disk image to the flash drive using the PC and then you can format it which of course will delete the contents. So on my version of the floppy disk software we have to do enable and then do F40 or F80 0. So F40 formats as 40 tracks and 0 you have to specify the drive number so 0 is drive 0. And if we press return it will format it. Does take quite a while but there you go it's still essentially a floppy disk interface even using modern flash drive memory and there we go and now if I do cat see we indeed have a blank um, virtual floppy image and if I go on to the next uh, virtual floppy image you see we still have the other disk image as before. So there we are loading, saving, deleting and formatting 
virtual floppy images.